Hello and welcome back to Jesus is Soul. My name is Shimon Klinger. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification button. This video is a companion video to the video that, re that we released yesterday. In that video, we looked and decoded the enemies of Jesus, who all represent different aspects within all of us, our negative character traits, our negativity that we continue to act upon. This negativity it goes against the wishes of our soul and they are areas where we continue to fall. The study and practice of Kabbalah is not intended to be a simply intellectual pursuit. And so though we might talk intellectually in previous videos about what it means to look at the Gospel of John from a Kabbalistic perspective, ultimately the wisdom of Kabbalah is meant to be a very practical tool that allows us ways to, to transform ourselves so that we can draw closer to our soul, so that we can draw closer to God. And so I wanted to present companion videos to the intellectual videos that allow us to do just that. This particular video represents the first one where we are going to use the tools of Kabbalah to draw closer to our soul. These videos are simply an introduction to Kabbalah. If you would like more information about how to use the tools of Kabbalah to bolster and to accentuate your particular spiritual path, there are links in the description box to Kabbalah classes and Kabbalah videos where you can get more information about the entire wisdom of Kabbalah. The wisdom of Kabbalah is meant to transform us. It is meant to make us better people. And when we employ the tools and techniques of Kabbalah, we are, it, we are supposed to find a better life through the transformation of our negative character traits. And so therefore we are going to use one of the most powerful tools of Kabbalah. In fact, Kabbalah teaches that the Zohar, the book of the Zohar, is the most powerful energy that exists for spiritual trans transformation in the entire world. Today we're going to use the Zohar to, to uproot our negative character traits. We're going to do this with the intention that it will help us to overcome times and areas of our life where those negative character traits get the best of us. So as we begin to read from the Zohar, we are going to first create an intention. What is one area in your life that you continually fall? One of those areas where you find it difficult to access the desires of your soul. One of the, an area of negativity that prevents you from actually accessing the voice of the light within you. For me personally, I am going to use this meditation and use the Zohar to help me overcome anger that I often have with my wife. I, can tend, I, I tend to be short with my wife in certain, situ in certain situations. And so as I read this, I am going to meditate to overcome those areas where I'm quick to anger. So what is it for you? Maybe pause this video right now, contemplate, think, and find one area in your life that you would like to transform. And then we will use the Zohar in order to uproot and transform that negative part of yourself and that part of that negative part of me. And so though the book of the Zohar is indeed a book, it is, according to Kabbalah, it is so much more than that. When we translate, Zohar, it means splendor. Zohar translates to pure spiritual light. And so when we access and read it, though it has an intellectual meaning behind its words, according to Kabbalah, that intellectual meaning is sort of somewhat secondary. Now we will be reading the we will be reading and translating the the words of the Zohar so that you get an idea as to what is actually said and what is actually written. But please know that the most important part of the reading of the Zohar is the, is the Aramaic, is the Hebrew letters. For the vibrations and the shapes of the Hebrew letters 
allow us to, to access and transform those negative character traits. It actually does most of the work for us. And so we are going to ask the, all of the righteous souls, we're going to ask the power of Jesus to transform us, to allow us to be a little bit more aware when those particular character traits make their presence felt. And so let's jump right into it. Again, keeping in mind the goal and the intention of this reading, let's read the relevance uh, as is written in the introduction to this particular chapter. Again, we are going to be reading from the Zohar portion of Shemot. Now, Shemot is a Torah portion that is read during one particular Shabbat. For those Christians who are unaware, the Torah, the five books of Moses, are divided up according to the weeks of the year. This particular Torah portion is, uh, is from Exodus 1.1 all the way through Exodus 6.1. And so the verses of the Zohar that we're going to be reading is expounding upon and decoding those particular verses. So let's read right now the introduction to this particular Zohar portion, the relevance. The ultimate intent behind the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai to Moses is accomplished for each reader and the world through the power of these heavenly verses. The Torah, viewed through the lens of Kabbalah, is an awesome instrument of power designed to uproot and banish every one of our negative desires and reactive traits that are embedded in our nature. In truth, a man does not possess the power to accomplish this profound task on its own. Rather, our accountability and acknowledgement of the various wicked aspects of our character is the effort we must exert. Once we identify and accept responsibility for these reprehensible characteristics, the light of the Torah is free to cleanse them from our being. As we connect to this particular passage, the reader should self-reflect on all his nefarious qualities. Recall moments of intolerance, envy, anger, insensitivity, narrow-mindedness, jealousy, rage, impatience, selfishness, and indulgence. The more difficult and painful it is to admit these misdeeds, the more powerful is the result you will achieve. This action will allow the Zohar to purge the underlying traits that are caused, that cause these reactive moments in the first place. The foul frequencies and darkness that arise from such behavior dissipate forever. The heavenly frequencies of the Torah now permeate our entire existence. So as we read, please know that we are reading from the portion of Shemot in the Zohar that within this particular portion, we're reading chapter 37, which is entitled, The King Was Reclining at His Board. And so let's begin. Rabbi Tzach Patach, Ar She HaMelech Bim Sibo Nirdi Natan Recho Ar She HaMelech Da Kuchabrechu He Dalek Ko Hamar Hashem Melech Israel Uktiv Vaihi Bishurin Bishurun Melech Bim Sibo Ben Kanfe Ha Karuvim Ha Karuvim Nidre Natan Recho De Garmo La Istaka Mi Banechon This word, this particular chapter, or this particular verse is 282 in the Zohar. Rabbi Itzaka opened the discussion saying, while the king was reclining at his board, my nard sent forth its fragrance. This is from, this is a verse from Song of Songs, verse number uh, 112. And the Zohar continues, while the king refers to the Holy One, blessed be he, as is written, thus says Hashem, the king of Israel, and he was king in Yeshurun. While the king was reclining at his board means the wings of the cherubs, that were on the Ark of the Testimony. My nard gave forth its fragrance, means that they caused the Holy One, blessed be He, to depart from among them, and give forth its fragrance means their bad order. As, as we read this, please know that the Zohar itself is a very coded text, and so therefore, if you don't necessarily understand what is written, it's okay. Our main point is to access the light, and that is through the that is through the Aramaic. We don't necessarily have to understand the the actual text from an intellectual standpoint. Instead, we are accessing the light of our soul. Verse two eighty three, Dalet Aleph, Ad, Shehamelik Bim Sibo 
בעוד דקוצ'ה ברכו, הווה יהיב, אורייתא לישראל דיקטיב, וכי שם עם השם, ארבעים יום וארבעים לילה, לחם לא אכל וגומל. בעוד דאווה כתיב, אורייתא לישראל שפקו, רך החון, תו ואמרו, אלא אלוהיך ישראל. Verse 283 in English. Another explanation of while the king was reclining at his board, meaning while the Holy One, blessed be he, was still giving the Torah to Israel as it is written, and he was there with Hashem 40 days and 40 nights, which refers to a book in, ex, or which refers to a verse in Exodus, specifically 34.28. While he was still writing the Torah for Israel, they abandoned their good frag- fragrance and said, These are your Elohim Israel. Again, this is a verse from Exodus 32.4. Shemot is the transliterated uh, title of Exodus in Hebrew. The meaning of sent forth is abandoned. And then our last verse for today, verse 284. Dalet Aleph Ad, She HaMelech Bim Sibo, Be'o Deva Kuchabrechu, נחית על תורה די סיני למיחב, אורייתא לישראל נרדי נתן רכו, דכתיב נעשה ונשמע. In English, 284. Another explanation of while the king was reclining at his board, while the Holy One, blessed be he, was still descended on Mount Sinai to give the Torah to Israel. Quote, my nard sent forth its fragrance, meaning literally, that it gave its good fragrance. It is written that they said, we will do and we will obey. We will obey. Now this concludes our reading for today. I love you all. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.